Hello guys and welcome back to this new video. Today we are going to talk about Sarah Hartman. Now, this is a woman um, that we might have seen several times without fully understanding who she was. There are several cartoons of that time that portray her um, in a certain way. So we might have seen her around. Um, lately I saw it in a post um, from El País, um, the newspaper El País, but there was no mention of her. And I thought it was important and it was um, extremely important culturally to understand who she was, uh, what she did, and why she's so meaningful and impactful. Sarah Bartman was probably an orphan um, and she was a woman working in South Africa. She was free but basically working around the late 19th century as a slave or pretty much in the same conditions of a slave. Um, this woman um, worked as a domestic, uh, worked as a house servant in South Africa for a British doctor, um, William Dunlop. And William Dunlop, along with a mixed race entrepreneur, Hendrik Caesar, kidnapped her. Um, what actually happened is that she signed under false pretenses a contract saying, saying that um, she was going to be shipped to Europe. And she was. Um, she probably had two kids um, with a um, Dutch soldier. The two kids, anyway, um, were separated from her. She embarked on a journey and spent some of her life uh, in London and Paris. When she arrived um, in Europe, she was a huge attraction and that was exactly the reason behind um, those two people, those two men, shipping her to Europe. Um, she was a black woman, um, she had an important size, but most of all, what was so particular about her, which wasn't necessarily typical of her and only her, but typical of um, some women, um, some women of color, we could also say, was what we now call, with the term stetiopigia, which is um, basically built up fat um, around the derriere. So basically the buttocks look very um, broad and very large. And that wasn't a trait that was specifically of this woman and only this woman, but this woman was chosen probably because they knew her as she was working again for one of them. She um, was shipped to Europe. Now, when she came to Europe, she didn't have a very easy life because she was paraded in freak shows. She would wear um, skin tight, flesh colored clothing, beads, feathers, and also smoke a pipe. Um, she was never completely naked, but we do know that she uh, worked or she was forced um, to work as a prostitute. Um, we also know that she died of eruptive disease, which would be classified as pneumonia, syphilis, and alcoholism, and she was only 26 when she died. Um, she was um, for the longest time ever in London, in working in freak shows, and then in Paris doing pretty much the same thing. Um, now, um, she was at the time known as the Attentat Venice, but Attentat became a very uh, denigratory term uh, by the Dutch because Attentat is exactly how Dutch would refer to uh, Koi Koi and Sun, um, again in a denigratory, disparaging way. And we also know of this woman that she um, was um, preserved, at least her remains or some of her remains were preserved as uh, the skeleton was preserved and also her brain and her genitals were pickled. And the guy that did that was George Cuvier. And George Cuvier um, 
basically preserved those remains until I think 2002, yes, when the remains were finally returned to South Africa. Um, and Kuvia was also the guy that um, basically initially was just interested in this woman, uh, in the remains, in analyzing the remains of this woman, but then later on used his so-called discoveries to postulate uh, the theory, that would be the central theory of the um, late 19th century and 20th century, postulating inferiority of the race, um, of the black people uh, against the white people. And I thought that this was um, such an important story. First of all, because nowadays we do know there are research that show that what is um, very attractive and one of the reasons why we can explain the attraction, um, uh, this, especially that men have um, to the buttocks of women, is um, the um, curvilinear um, spine. So in other words, a certain spine that has a certain angle that will make uh, the butt look in a certain way is perceived very attractive, scientifically speaking, um, by men. And so that seems to be an evolutionary trait um, that was just selected that way. But also, um, besides what we know in scientific terms, that story, this story of Sarah Bartman has so many implications because she was literally kidnapped. Um, you can't really say that she um, gave them her consent. She probably didn't even know if that really happened. She probably didn't even know what that would entail. We don't know fully the reasons why they did that. We do know that was a particular time because in England in 1807 um, was passed something called a Slave Trade Act, which was um, basically an act through which England finished uh, the trade of slaves. That doesn't mean though that there were no slaves. Um, that means that slaves could not be treated any longer. And the fact that this story just uh, frames itself in the sort of scenario where on the one hand we have uh, no more um, uh, slave trades and on the other hand we do have still slaves. And we are crossing that period of time that then will lead us into um, superiority and inferiority race um, complexes and theories, right, is particularly um, relevant, especially in hindsight, because nowadays we do know that there is also something um, like plastic surgeries um, that uh, some people um, want to some people um, have on their butt to look in a certain way. And though, um, and do not misunderstand me, like these um, features, this trait of hers was um, attractive to men and probably women, the thing that was more interesting to them was just the fact that this was so exotic and so foreigner uh, to their eyes. And so again, it's the idea that whoever doesn't look like us should be discriminated on the basis of having or not having certain traits. Um, and this is just to put it mildly. Um, anyway, the considerations are multiple because again, one of the main criteria today is to have a certain butt looking a certain way, so much so we resort to plastic surgery, which to me is quite interesting, right? Now, on the one hand, we have a woman that has a um, congenital trait, you know, um, her butt will look that way naturally anyway. And then in uh, this picture of Help Eyes um, that you can guys also check, uh, this picture of this woman that was made a prostitute was associated and um, put next to that of Kim Kardashian, which to me is not kind of the same thing. It just shows that they had no idea of who that woman was, but that's my personal opinion. I might be wrong on that. Um, but um, I also wanted to tell you that uh, the two guys that actually shipped her were prosecuted but never convicted, that is for the record. Um, prosecuted but never convicted, which means basically that it was still perceived as uh, kind of legal to do that. 
Um, and her remains uh, were for the longest time ever in Paris and were returned in South Africa only very much um, later on. Uh, which again, why a country would um, advocate for themselves the right to keep the remains of a body it's not theirs and why they would not return it, it just doesn't make too much sense to me. But anyway. I thought it was just important to remember her. Um, and guys, please don't forget to comment below because I do really want to know your opinion on this story. So don't forget to like the video if you have enjoyed it, to subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and of course, don't forget to comment here below. We'll talk some more next time in a new video. Bye!